In the 90s, there was a genetically engineered bacteria engineered to turn plant matter into alcohol. And some very well-meaning scientists had a great idea. Let's send this bacteria to farmers. When farmers finish their harvest, they often burn the crop rubble. And instead, they can mix it in huge barrels with the bacteria and turn it into alcohol. Turn a spigot on the, on the barrel, get the alcohol, and run their tractor. Then all of the nutrient-rich sludge at the bottom of the barrel could be spread on the field as fertilizer. The EPA said, great, go ahead, do it. You've already done, you've tried to test it this way and this way and this way. We have no further tests. Go for it. A graduate student needed some research for his PhD. Talked to his advisor, Dr. Elaine Ingham. They approved research on this particular bacteria, Klebsiella planticola. And he did something that was not required. He tested that sludge as a fertilizer. So he put soil that was growing wheat seeds over here, soil that was growing wheat seeds with regular Klebsiella planticola, and then the GMO version. The, he mixed the sludge with the, with the soil and grew the wheat seeds over there. Two weeks before they were going to release this bacteria to see how far it spread on its own. That was their first experiment. Let's put it outdoors, release it, and monitor how far it goes. Two weeks before that, Saturday morning, shows up at his laboratory, gets into his workplace, and he's, oh my God, I must have done something wrong. All of the little sprouts of wheat on the GMO side were just this green slime. It was all turned to mush. He figured he did something wrong. But when he looked closer, he realized that the GMO bacteria had turned the plants to alcohol. Elaine Ingham, his supervisor, told me later on, someone from the EPA told her about a secret study that the EPA will not acknowledge. They released a different GMO bacteria to see how far it would spread. In the first season, 11 miles. And after they stopped funding it, one person continued to test it in wider and wider regions, sometimes on her own dime. And eventually they found it everywhere on Earth. So when you put that study from the EPA together with this, I asked Dr. Ingham, what would happen if they did release it, if it was deployed? She said, it could end terrestrial plant life. All the crops grown in soil have this bacteria. If you introduce a GMO bacteria that outpopulates and outsurvives its natural parent. Then it could be replaced by bacteria that would convert all the plant roots to alcohol. So it could have been a cataclysm. So you had headlines like a biological apocalypse averted. This was in the 90s, but it wasn't the first time we had a biological apocalypse convert, uh, averted. In the late 80s, scientists wanted to protect the value of strawberries in a field in when there was a frost. They knew that there was bacteria on that, on that bacteria, on the uh, crop that turned the water into frost at higher temperatures than would otherwise be created. So they genetically engineered the Pseudomonas syringae to not have the magical powers that it did to allow water to freeze at higher temperatures. And they were going to spread it out throughout the industry. But it turns out that arguments made that there were weeds that could also be, that are also killed 
because of frost would become super weeds. And so they, they incinerated where they had done the test plots and they never released it. But now we know that this magical bacterium is responsible, it's airborne, it's all over the planet, it's all over the atmosphere. It's responsible for creating water vapor droplets for clouds. It's, it builds snow, frost. It's used in snowmaking machines. So what would have happened if this genetically engineered variety outsurvived the natural variety? It may have changed the weather patterns throughout the planet. Now, these are just two types of bacteria. What do we know about bacteria? A lot more than we knew 10 years ago. The biggest thing in medicine right now, one of them is the gut microbiome. You take a fecal transplant, fecal matter from a sick animal, put it in a healthy animal, the, animal can, the healthy animal can get sick. You take healthy animals, feces, Put it into a sick animal, and the sick animal can get better. Fat to skinny, skinny to fat. Humans, similar changes. Dr. David Perlmutter told me about an autistic boy. They did a fecal transplant. Two weeks later, he was speaking in full sentences. There's some kind of crosstalk programming that happens in the bacterial world. I talked to Dietrich Klinghart. A doctor, he said, the microbiome of the brain, they've tested it, it's what gives us intelligence. If you reduce it, you get dumber. The bacteria changes in the breast of a woman with a breast cancer. Why? Because it's there to help. There's new organisms in the brain for Alzheimer's, there to help. They're like the mini Jedi army inside of us and around us. We genetically engineer bacteria, what happens if it ends up in our gut, in our bodies? What happens if it swaps genes, as bacteria does? And now we have genes that don't do what they're supposed to do because they, we have now a gene that was created in a laboratory. Or the soil. We know almost nothing about soil microbiome. We know just a tiny portion. And yet we're playing with it, with bacteria that has very little testing and unpredicted side effects. And this year, this genetically engineered bacteria is being sold as a fertilizer for the first time. And soon, these pre-probiotics, genetically engineered, will be sold as well.